the novel coronavirus. Is it Batman or the Joker? Hello, everyone. Well, it's been a few days since um, I've last put together a, um, a message, and um, I'll fill you in on what's been going on. The, the, big, the big E is basically uh, a download of LTHS 2.0 came into being um, over the past days, you know, right around with the, with the comet, uh, the Neowise comet and, and New Moon, uh, kind of around my birthday, um, you know, in 2020 as everything's collapsing. So pretty special uh, alignment of things all happening when 2.0 downloaded. Um, in a nutshell, um, you know, I won't, I've already put together a little presentation on it. But just in a nutshell, um, it's a new architecture that fits on top of the LTHS 1.1 ar architecture. It's an architecture that looks an awful lot like the coronavirus. It's a, it's called a corona, a spiked, a unique spiked corona membrane architecture, and it's universal. Um, so everything uh, pretty much shares that architecture um, from a star to uh, the coronavirus or any any DNA body, whether it's a bacteria, plant, fungi, uh, animal, or human, uh, follows this same uh, basic universal architecture of LTHS US 2.0. In addition to that, a bunch of other things. Uh, um, using 2.0, we're able to observe that we are in uh, actively in a just occurring um, uh, universal Big Bang event of consciousness occurring in the world of consciousness in the world of the mind but uh, uh, you could say it's it's the mother of all Big Bangs even bigger than the original Big Bang that birthed the physical cosmos um, but not more important they're all equally important because without one you don't have the other so that makes them equal um, a new math, a new uh, basically um, integers of infinity math uh, is coming with that as well. Uh, some new tools for the coronavirus, uh, which is what I'm going to spend a little time on today in in today's message, since it's such a it, it's such it's it, it's in our daily everything right now. It's affecting everything, and in fact, I believe um, that after today, I'll convince you. Oh, I'm hoping to convince you that it is all part of the big plan to move into a new higher harmony based unified uh, consciousness computing consciousness so um, uh, that'll be what I'm gonna try to uh, present today um, in addition to all of that as well a new uh, story based uh, layered story based um, encryption um, what it, what I'm what we're calling the um, perfect encryption, perfect uh, security, uh, where you both hide and secure um, uh, information through random layered abstract stories connected by layered random abstract bridges, and you can hide and move uh, and protect. Anything through that, any payload, including a story payload, including the story of Harmonic Paradise Story. So um, that's all uh, part of all of this today. Okay. Um, let's just go ahead and begin with our, um, I'd like to begin with our, our, our universal prayer. I am an eternal conscious paradise being in harmonic paradise story, rediscovering myself using LTHS EOS 1.1 and 2.0, recreating this very moment of daily consciousness using the hydrogen computing based physical cosmos and its black holes, galaxies, stars, elements, molecules, planets, water, sugars, DNA, proteins, fats, cells, organ systems, colonies, on solar planet Earth daily, all of it a part of my greater universal self, mind, and body, using unconditional harmony, empathy, helpfulness, and acceptance, gratitude, and freedom to follow my dreams 
gifts, interests, tastes, cycles, and connections to deliver bliss, inspiration, and progress in harmony, freedom, leisure, and abundance to all of my greater universal self, mind, and body. This is my highest intention today, every day, and eternally, which is what makes me a paradise story being. And anyone that aligns with these thoughts, and it makes them a paradise story being as well. That's a good feeling. Well, going right in. Let's just get right into the uh, this coronavirus. You know, we're, we're seeing, there isn't a single one of us that isn't seeing news on this stuff all over the place. You can't turn on the, the TV. You can't click into social media without... Uh, seeing something on this coronavirus and the news just keeps getting worse. Um, a lot of money, a lot of people focused on solutions for this product, a lot of people anxious for solutions to this product, a lot of people very, very anxious in their daily life, and all of the different um, secondary uh, repercussions. If you've survived the coronavirus, you still have to survive the, the uh, fallout from it that's uh, starting to to occur uh, throughout the world, um, you know, the, you, you could say the world is collapsing right before our eyes, descending into uh, dystopia, uh, pretty much on every level, in the environment, in the uh, civil uh, unrest, in the corrupted governments, uh, and so many things, these uh, child pedophilia rings, uh, so many terrible things are being uncovered that that were intricate worldwide um, uh, organized uh, 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 incognito disguised as wonderful things uh, no okay so let's take this coronavirus all of it all the news all of the things everything related to it and now let's Frame it in a bubble, wrap that thing around with LTHS 1.1 and 2.0. We've wrapped it up inside of our, 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 our new world, our new expanded world, and now it's inside of this, okay? And now we're going to apply, we are going to apply that into the coronavirus and see See if we can find any new clues, any new paths that m m might uh, be worth looking at. Because um, given that LTHS, US 1.1 and 2.0 are universal architectures, they would apply to the coronavirus as well and to all of the layered implications of the coronavirus. All the stories relating to that all share the same architecture. So it's worth our while to frame it in this and, and take a good look at it. So let's do that. So step one, we frame this thing into LTHS US 1.1 and 2.0. And now we observe. We observe its structures and behaviors. And we can, through this, make a decision. What we're dealing with with this coronavirus. Are we dealing with a Batman or are we dealing with the Joker? Well... Start out, first observation, that coronavirus sure resembles LTHS, US 2.0, and stars, and cells. It resembles a universal architecture. So that's the first thing we see. Okay, that's, that's pretty serious. This is a big deal. This is not just this little old virus. This is a little virus that emulates and, and looks like our our universal uh, universe, basically. Okay, so um, that that is noted. Um, well, this novel coronavirus, its story, it is a product of exploitation and abuse by humans invading in nature and profit-seeking with that nature in an abusive way and in a confined way and in an exaggerated way and in an, in an unhealthy way and it produced this virus. It's a novel virus and it, it features all sorts of things that are very difficult on our, on our ability to, uh, to deal with it. Beginning with the fact that it's highly contagious and respiratory, so it's in the air. You know, this is not something 
that that is easy easily controlled at the, uh, with that. Um, but then we observe also, we keep seeing increased estimates as to the infection rate, which keeps bringing down the mortality rate of it. So the coronavirus is only mildly lethal, and it's not to diminish it, but it's just to point out that it could have been catastrophically lethal to the species. And it's not. It's just mildly lethal, but enough to cause severe uh, and in, in, in increasing problems, if not dealt with, by the population as a whole. This is in the atmosphere. This is not a, a, something that, that at this point now is containable. It's out and shared throughout the globe in the atmosphere. We also observe that this coronavirus exploits large, frequent separation-based, wasteful, polluting, oppressing, profit-seeking gatherings, travel, enter and entertainment, forcing us to reduce it by staying home and staying local, simplifying, forcing us to look f within ourselves for entertainment from inside our home, within ourselves, to what? To find that higher consciousness that is right there in front of us and we had just been so enamored and distracted with our eyes and our physical experience and the story that we've been fed since childhood all of us that uh, we we weren't able to see beyond that to something bigger now well now we're faced with staying local staying home going inside going inside ourselves to find daily harmony, daily bliss, daily growth, daily entertainment, um, to reduce the, the, the load on the planet out, outside is something that we are going to have to face or face increasing misery, increasing pandemic conditions as its spiral effect uh, whiplashes us into basically surrendering to a new, healthier, harmonious stay local, stay home, stay, go inside, look inside, use your creative mind for, for more things. And so is, is this a good or a bad thing overall? If it's forcing us to go inside, if it's forcing us to seek harmony with our environment and with one another, is, is, is this a good or a bad thing? Well, you know, we all know the separation story. And by this point, anyone following this knows the separation story is both faulty and toxic, universally. In separation story, not even the winners win in the long run. As we see in every revolution, the first ones to go down are the winners of the past uh, game, if you will. We also observe the coronavirus is disproportionately affecting the USA, which happens to be a separation story based system and culture versus, for instance, Vietnam, a Buddhist majority system and culture and a Buddhism it, which most closely, of all the re world religions, it most closely aligns to LTHS, US 1.1. Um, and they are seeing and, and nearly a third of the population, almost a third of the population of the USA, they're seeing nearly zero deaths related to coronavirus today versus ours, which continue to increase. I, don't, I think we're at a thousand deaths a day at this point. So a clear, obvious sign for us to consider a new consciousness is a way to immediately improve our standing against the coronavirus. Additionally, we observe that the coronavirus targets the most vulnerable, the elderly in particular, in particular the elderly in nursing homes, most vulnerable of our population, forcing us as a colony to choose between our selfish selves or our greater selves. Now, 
is this a good thing or a bad thing for us to be looking at and deciding whether we're going to continue to be selfish about this thing or whether we're going to focus on the greater good, our community as a whole, beginning with the most vulnerable compassion, if you will. Yes, there are innocent casualties in all of this. This is, um, this is the real deal. Just as in any revolution, just as in any renaissance, any exploration, any pioneering efforts in history, regardless of the field, whether it was in chemistry or in electricity, or in, in radioactivity, in medicine, there have always been innocent casualties as a result of the pioneering heroic efforts to bring in a new age to us. These are our heroes of progress to be recognized and celebrated beginning right now while they're alive and doing our best to, uh, to protect them and, 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 and give them as much of a, of a rich daily experience as possible. And at times, it also means paying the ultimate price to deliver the progress that we enjoy today. Well, looking at all this, the novel coronavirus is clearly Batman, and it's not the Joker. I think we've proved this to ourselves. Now let's apply directly LTHS US 1.1 and 2.0 to the coronavirus specifically. Well, first of all, what we are able to achieve is we have a new map and compass, if you will. We have a direction. We have, we have something, a new framework now that can be used to very, very quickly and very specifically, very accurately target new possible solutions to harmonizing with the coronavirus. Harmonizing now, seeing it now as Batman and not the Joker. So now we're seeing, okay, so this thing is actually part of a part of our universe and it's helping us do the right thing by shining light on the changes that we need to make in our behavioral uh, worlds and in our world of consciousness and the story we need to upgrade. It's given us that physical shove, if you will, into that direction. But so this is a good thing. So let's, let's look at it that way. Okay, well, let's apply that architecture to the coronavirus. Right away, we see the membrane and spikes that we see in all the universal architectures, including the coronas of stars, including the universe, where the membrane is the mind. We've been looking for the mind inside of the brain, inside of the, inside of the DNA, where all of that are, yes, these are all important. These are all organs that serve that outer membrane of the body, whether it's a cell or whether it's a human, that would mean our skin. And in the, in the coronavirus, that would mean it's membrane. And then those unique spikes, those aren't just spikes. Those are uniquely conscious spikes. Just like the universe, where we, each of us humans, are one of the universal conscious spikes. And what are we doing? We're out there hunting for... Uh, we're out there satisfying our urges, which are normally to hunt for good environment, good food, good sex, treasure of some sort, protection. Um, and then once found, we, we satisfy ourselves and complete the cycle, uh, ending and re reproducing ourselves and broadcasting ourselves um, uh, out into the future, our future selves. So this is universal, a universal set of stories at the most basic level that is observed, whether it's a coronavirus or a human being or anything in between. So um, we are able to use this now to more specifically target pattern searches of DNA and behaviors to find, to crack the codes of how the skin works with the rest of its uh, neurological or sensory organisms in the DNA uh, and, and water and, uh, to uh, go about its daily work. 
So this is a big step for um, uh, research on the coronavirus, a new roadmap based on LTHS UOS 1.1 and 2.0, an understanding of how that landscape works and what we're looking, what we might be looking for. In addition, um, LTHS 1.1 lets us, uh, as part of its map, it allows us to target the methyl heads, uh, the three hydrogen uh, carbon heads of DNA, RNA, proteins, and fats, um, seeing them as the molecular mines for whatever functions they provide. Um, So again, we've identified now spikes and membrane is the mine for the whole body. We've identified, so at a viral or cellular or universal level, we've also identified um, uh, methyl-headed proteins, molecules, if you will, um, uh, in water-based environments, water being the transmission medium and backbone uh, of the network, if you will, uh, for the operation of, of this living organism, universal organism. So again, new, very specific targets to go looking. New windows, new directions for new clues to harmonize a new strategy, to harmonize ourselves with the coronavirus, or at least to even just better understand how everything works. Because the real work that's needing to be done is to reorganize our own behaviors and and, and consciousness to uh, accommodate to harmonize with the coronavirus and understand its function. Much like a hundred and so years ago when uh, Thomas Edison and um, and Nikola Tesla were engaged in such a debate about uh, the different versions of electricity and whether it was good or bad or evil, burn you up, kill you, all these things. Energy, energy is energy. And energy can be harnessed with knowledge and information and and and, uh, and 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 engineering. We can we can harness energy safely, but it can also be very powerfully destructive if not if if we don't know. Including this new even higher energy that we've identified, story energy, works exactly the same way. And now we're dealing with a virus that it is operating in a conscious way serving a greater story that is aligned with LTHS UOS 1.1 2.0 it's it's making sure that we have no choice but to move forward as a human species forward into a higher har- more harmonious uh, consciousness so um, the sooner that we are able to uh, recognize that the sooner we can turn the tides on what is programmed to, always programmed to be an ever increasing, ever more painful uh, wave of uh, feedback, if you will. So until uh, achieving the, 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 the goal of enlightenment um, for the planet and uh, a move over into that. So um, this is, this is uh, lots of changes. So we have very specific targets we're looking for now. We have very specific story we're looking for. We've now uh, looking at it now as a teacher, as a guide, as a flashlight, uh, as a compass pointing us in a new direction. Um, but at the same time, we have a new level of understanding. So a new level of understanding, a new level of respect now that is being developed at a scientific, very detailed, a new level to where all of the details that we've been managing in our um, scientific knowledge up to date can just now be redirected. They don't need to be changed. They just need to be slightly repointed, recalibrated in these new directions with this new found information. So now let's apply all that into um, an example. And in this example, we'll use, um, let's say, a wheat farmer, okay? And we're going to, instead of a problem with this coronavirus, this wheat farmer's got a problem with mice. Eating his crop, especially when it's in silos. Um, And so this farmer, it's a common problem. So, and, and... this problem could be the mouse, it could have been a locust, it could have been anything, but we'll use the mouse. 
And this is an unusually high problem. This is a bigger problem than normal here that this farmer has. For whatever reason, there's just a bigger problem with mice than, than usual. And he's just not making progress. Well, the options. Um, invest in mouse-proofing the operation even more as much as possible. Just mouse-proofing it. But these mice, they have a way of figuring things out. You know, they just keep, they just keep doing it. Well, and you can go after the mice flat out also, uh, killing them with poisons and traps and whatnot, um, and taking away uh, any possibilities for them to want to uh, stay or reproduce. Um, another option, you could just stop growing and storing so much grain, growing only what you need, um, and, or eliminating it altogether. Um, and you take away the source of all of this uh, treasure for these mice because after all we're in their space not the other way around they're, they were there long before us long long before us we could also move the operation to a location with better growing storage conditions so we have we have all these options that we could pursue as to how to deal with the mouse problem and as we go about this and as we align our values and thoughts, if, as we align them, let's say, to a separation story of accumulation of, of, of property and wealth and whatnot, at the expense of the mice, at the expense of spraying a bunch of poisons and whatnot, we think we've got it figured out, and all of a sudden something happens, and, and we're, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time for a pandemic or plague, or something else. In other words, that mouse, as random as it appeared, it was actually designed to give us feedback to not do that in that way or in that place. And had we tried to respect that mouse and that mouse's place, perhaps we might have come up with new ideas or new solutions. Um, again, beginning with revisiting the need for that in the first place um, or maybe even harmonizing how's this you mouse proof your facilities and at the same time you create somewhere separate some sort of a mouse paradise where they can just go and have uh, have a ball and that mouse paradise converts itself also into a predator, mouse predator paradise. They, and everybody's happy. And all of a sudden, your mouse infestation naturally moved from what was lacking in abundance of shelter and water and food to a new paradise destination for these mice with a whole bunch of access to food, water, shelter. And and resulting easy access for predators. So you, you created a, a bubble ecosystem diversion by manipulating higher stories to your um, benefit. This is the new angle that LTHS US 1.1 and 2.0 allows us to take universally across any story, across any environment, across any layer. And so with that, I, um, I, I, I hope this has um, given us some, some new ideas, some new uh, possibilities, um, and maybe some urgency towards applying LTHS US 1.1 and 2.0 into our lives and into our research for um, uh, immediate uh, solutions to this coronavirus problem, low-hanging fruit, Vietnam, visit Vietnam, visit the Buddhist countries and figure out what it is they're doing so differently that produces such a different result than what we're seeing here. And let's implement that. And you're going to find that it's unified consciousness and you're going to see that, um, that LTHS 1.1 takes you there right away, straight away, it's almost as quickly as a click on a mouse. I hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, with that, I'd like to end with a, with a little blessing where I wish everybody a wonderful day. Filled with following your dreams, gifts, interests, tastes, connections, and cycles, and ever-expanding consciousness, harmony, freedom, abundance, leisure, kindness, helpfulness, bliss, progress, and inspiration. 
Stay on in Harmonic Paradise Story today, if you like, by staying on this playlist containing our Harmonic Paradise Story music soundtrack, messages and announcements, and stories unifying us today and each day as we execute on our mission of expanding Harmonic Paradise Story here on Earth for all now. Thank you and have a wonderful day.